Hello world, this is What's Up 2190 and in today I'm going to be giving, not the thoroughest, but a bit of a, uh, hopefully you'll learn something, expl explanation of shortwave or HF radio, ham radio propagation. This affects both amateur radio operators and shortwave radio listeners. So, the basic principle of how shortwave radio or HF radio, amateur radio, reach it, whatever you want to call it, re is able to reach around the Earth. The very, very basic version of it is that the signal flies up from the intent, the transmitter's antenna, bounces off the ionosphere, and lands back down, back down on Earth a very far, at least several hundred mile distance from, from the transmitting device. But for those of you who were wondering about, so why is it that, you know, the shortwave radio broadcasters choose this certain time of day to broadcast on this, on this certain frequency? Or, you know, why do hams choose to use 80 meters at night or but then 20 meters a day? I'm going to give a shot at answering that question for you. And uh, hopefully this explanation will teach you something so you know there's this thing up there's this thing up in the atmosphere that's called the ionosphere that's made out of ions right and uh, depending on the what time it is during the solar system cycle the ionosphere has a varying amount of charge so you know when basically when there's lower propagation going on not as many sunspots the ionosphere is not as charged. This is what we call lower solar activity. And uh, when the ionosphere during the 11-year solar system, 11-year solar cycle is at what we call solar maximum, and when there are tons and tons of sunspots and tons and tons of propagation going on, you know, on, um, you know, the, the ionosphere will be extremely charged and able to, to uh, bounce back even the weakest uh, HF radio signals, radio waves, with instead of just absorbing them, as it would with lower power radio waves when it's not as charged. So, you know, here I've got a bit of a graphic of uh, the different layers of the ionosphere. The D region, which is the lowest radar layer, that's about 50 miles above the Earth's surface. The E region, which is in the middle, and then the F region. So this all leads into why hams and shortwave radio broadcasters use different frequencies depending on what time, depending on the time of day. Propagation. The ionosphere is not always the same, and that's kind of what makes shortwave interesting for a lot of people, but challenging for others, is... You know, so we have this the D region, the E region, and the F region at the top. Why we use, generally use, uh, higher frequencies during the day is because during the day, the D region is going to be a lot, the D region is going to be there, and the E region is going to be a lot stronger it is at night than it is at night. So, as a resort, if you try to use a low frequency during the day, it's going to fly up and most likely, mostly get absorbed by the ionosphere. It may make it a few miles, but it's not going to make it nearly as far as it will at night, talking on 80 meters, which is, you know, what we call the 3.6 to 4.0 frequencies, or 40 meters, which is what we call the, uh, the, 7 to 7 not 30 frequencies whereas during the day you know, whereas during the day you, you know we use the higher frequencies because you know the 20 meters or the higher than that frequencies 14 plus megahertz will fly up fly through fly through the, to the top layer of the ionosphere and get ricocheted, ricocheted back down due to it, 
due to that that the D and E region not be not being an issue for the higher frequencies. The higher frequencies will fly up basically for those who are having trouble understanding higher into the ionosphere and get ricocheted down a down and won't get absorbed by the D and E E region which are there during the day. Whereas during the day the um, D and E region will be sorry whereas at night the D and E region will disappear which now we're going to switch now we're at night so the D region of the ionosphere disappears at night and the E region is still there but it's not as strong so you know during the day during the night sorry the higher frequencies are a little less reliable because you know that the D and E region are stronger than they at night than they are at day so they're going to absorb it more and uh, whereas the lower frequencies which are you know 80 meters and 40 meters and below 10 megahertz will ricochet off of the D region and travel a far distance at night. Of course, these are rules that are just general. You know, that's what makes it confusing for a lot of people. These are not absolute rules in any way. They're just general rules of thumb. You know, I've made contacts on 20 meters at right as dusk is turning into night, so... But, you know, the generally this is the case of course this can differ depending on essentially what the essentially how much charge the ionosphere did receive during a day so that's it about it i hope i cleared things up a little bit made things a little less confusing hopefully and uh, hope you liked the video. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe. This is What's Up 2190, and I'm signing off. Have a nice day, and I'll see you next video.